Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be at least making the start of a review of Stage Fright by Garrett Boatman with an introduction by Will Erickson for his first number, a little something that will have them screaming in their seats. Dane reads. So this was sent to me with by Regina Sinclair. I've won a competition on her channel, Regina's Bookish Library. I do recommend checking that out. Um, she sent me her own book as well, and I've got to admit, I mean, I haven't finished reading it at the time of filming this bit. I just have some intro bits to share with you. But, um... I preferred Regina's book. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm going to read you the blurb and then we're going to go through and check out some tabs. Out of the darkness of the fetid Hudson River, the undead rose to eat their victims alive. Horror movie monsters burst from late night TV screens to turn their viewers into victims. Biker gangs of decomposing corpses rode the highways of America on the hunt for unsuspecting motorists. Take a front seat in the baddest nightmare in town. Superstar Izzy Stark has the power to make your dreams and nightmares come true. He's the master of disaster, the guru of gore, the doctor of doom, the duke of death and destruction, and you can't escape this command performance. This first ever reprint of Garrett Boatman's rare 80s paperback horror gem, Stage Fright 1988, features a new introduction by Will Erickson and a reproduction of the original cover art. So this bit here, this little bit of the introduction is going to give you kind of some con con context on what this is about. But it kind of annoyed me because it kind of paints this idea as being Boatman's own idea and it's not. Literally the exact concept of Dreamies, the concept and the name both come from Isaac Asimov. Um, and it's not, he's not credited anywhere, which annoys me because I'm an Asimov fan. The main conceit of Stage Fright is a future technology called MDIT for microwave dream imaging transmitter, explained in the book's second chapter. Invented in the early 90s, it is not perfected till Izzy Stark, a rock star who comes along in 1998 and masters what is known as dreamies, which are movies made from, surprise surprise, the creator's dreams, which other people can then partake in as a thrill ride. We also have like the blood of schizophrenics being used uh, as a plot device, it kind of makes you schizophrenic temporarily. I'm not sure how uh, 2021 woke that is. Especially because it, uh, I think when he wrote it, it was based on real science, which turns out to be totally made up. We get a line about this undead thing. Even though it had decomposed, the thing's nails had grown. Again, that, that's an urban legend. People think that that's what happens, that our hair and our nails continue to grow after we die. What actually happens is that our skin kind of withers and so our skin like retracts to around our bones and so it gives the appearance that our hair and nails have grown but actually no, the skin has shrank. And we get a few references to some different books. Um, so, uh, well here we go. Grinning, he turned to Quentin. I was into Robin Hood as a boy. I still can't split the arrow but I'm working on it. You're not far off. With his blonde, blue-eyed looks and bow in hand, Izzy might have been Legolas slaying orcs at the Battle of Hornburg, minus the pointed ears. He plucked another arrow from the quill and offered it, it and the bow to Quentin. Take a shot. I better not, Quent said, looking dubiously at the bow. I don't want to put a hole in your wall. You'll notice the target's pretty big. Go on, take a shot. Quent held his palms up defensively. I haven't touched one of those since I was a kid in summer camp. Well, here's your chance. Quent shrugged and took the bow. The wood was smooth as plastic under his fingers. He curled his fingers around the leather grip. He flashed on a scene from the Odyssey, Odysseus drawing the string of the bow that none of Penelope's suitors could bend. Just a few cool little literature references there. Uh, we get this line as well. Quent started to say he wasn't a critic, that he paid his rent when he could by hyping electronics for stereo comp companies, and that the Vampirophile article had earned him only four cents a word, but he let Izzy go on. Four cents a word's actually not a bad freelan freelance rate, so I'm at like easily the top 10% of the market in terms of how expensive my, my rate is, and I charge 5.5 cents a word. But this was written in 1998 and sort of takes place about 10 years later. Four cents a word? I don't know, that seems like a decent rate to me. We get this bit here. Uh, I know it's the question every artist hates, but where do I get my ideas? Yeah, that's the question every artist hates. To the point at which it's a bit of a cliche, you know? So Izzy has a nightmare. We get this, uh, a bad one, she said. Then realised when she touched his forehead just how bad. He was drenched, his skin clammy, and he was shivering. Yeah, that's how I wake up, like, every day. And a great quote here. Um, Tell them that only by facing the certainty of your own death does everything else fall into perspective. I mean, yeah, anxiety. Welcome to the club, bro. Just this little bit here that did amuse me. She giggled into her pillow, remembering Casper's habit of putting on his underwear before getting out of bed. Accidents will happen, he'd explained when she asked. If you go about with your John Thomas dangling, sooner or later you're gonna lose it. And we get this here, uh, has Junior called lately? He called Sunday, he's thinking of getting out of teaching and getting a real job. Jason laughed, it was an old joke. Like the old saying, those who can do, those who can't teach. Uh, and I'm kind of vaguely dating a teacher at the moment. 
and she says it's one of her pet hates. Well, her big pet hate is people saying that she babysits all day, and it's like, no, she educates all day, mate. And we get this interesting case of uh, when the, the dreamies backfire. There was a dreamer in England, Quint said, remembering something he'd read. Right, Regidak said, in Liverpool, one Alex Drummer to be precise. He played before a packed house of so-called punks. Seems they didn't like the show and their bad thoughts sort of collectively punched. He jabbed the air for emphasis. Anyway, he died of a cerebral hemorrhage. And some of the audience who spoke to the media proudly claimed they'd killed him and that was the way Liverpool dealt with Jung. And that comes into play again later on in the story. All right, last tab, if I can open my page, here it is. Oh yeah, so Nazgul come down at the uh, final show. A dozen voices from the surrounding seats echoed him. He thrilled at the sight. Tolkien's Nazgul, what a stroke of genius. Most of the audience probably was familiar with The Lord of the Rings. Stark was using an old ploy. Show the public something they're already familiar with and they'll accept it, hook, line and sinker, and they'll want to swallow more. And that just interested me because George R. R. Martin's written a book and I can't remember the title. Oh, was it? No, I can't remember which one it was now. Uh, but he wrote a book anyway in which uh, there's a band in it called Nazgul. And so it's just weird, a book about music and it used the same thing, you know? And this was written pre-Peter Jackson as well. So yeah, overall stage fright by Garrett Bowman. I mean, it still left a bad taste in my mouth because of the dreamies thing, to be honest. So I gave it a three out of five. Other than that, it's pretty standard, like indie horror. It reads like a self-published novel um, in, you know, the nicest way possible. <laughs> um, uh, and I just think I'd rather be reading some contemporary indie than, than this, uh, especially because it didn't credit Asimov. My thoughts on this are that he must have somehow accidentally have done it. He accidentally created the same concept with the same name. But even then, it's like, well, 30 years plus have passed since its original publication, and it's got an introductory essay, and you would think somebody would have noticed it. But yeah, anyway, that's what I made a stage fright by Garrett Bowman. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.